Welcome to the Coffee Hour, a show that involves you in verbal interaction. We have the 2020 feature, Sports with Brian Camp, and Entertainment News with DJ Pete. So settle in with coffee in hand, and enjoy the Coffee Hour. Now here's your host, Frank Allen. Well, here we are, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Here we are on a Friday morning. And welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen, and we're coming to you live from New York. That's where we broadcast and broadcasting all around the world. For those of you who have been with us for the uh, uh, past few years here watching us, we thank you for returning. And those of you who are watching us for the first time, well, please, we're going to tell you more about how you can stay in touch with us. As a matter of fact, all you have to do is uh, just subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching us on YouTube. And uh, on Facebook, you can take this show and you can uh, tag your friends with it because we're all around the world, also on Instagram as well. And that's what we do. And we're here every uh, Friday morning. We engage you in conversation. It's a coffee hour. We get together, have coffee, and we engage. And those of you who are out there, you want to chime in at any time you want. I'll see you right there up on the big screen as you make your comments, suggestions, and ideas, and just even say hi or chat. And people who come in, they can chat as well. Now, we're going to ask all of you people, most of you anyway, you know, this is not one of those things where it's mandatory to do so, but we always ask people when they chime in in conversation with us, no matter where you are around the world, give us your weather forecast. Let us know what it's like where you are weather-wise. And of course, if you're in New York City, don't have to worry about that because being that I'm broadcasting from New York City, I will take care of the weather forecast for you. So we're here and we thank all of you guys for being along with us. Now, later on in the program, we're going to do our usual thing, first of all, we're going to have our 2020 feature, and that contains uh, 20 past the hour sports with Brian Camp with the latest developments in today's world of sports. He will be along in just a few minutes from now. And 20 to the hour, DJ Pete with his entertainment news, reciting all of those birthdays of the people of notoriety of the week. However, DJ Pete won't be here today, so I will be filling in for him, and uh, he was kind enough to send all of his information to us so we could recite them all for you. So all of that is coming up, too. Also, we have those classic movies that you enjoy so much, my picks of the week for the weekend for Turner Classic Movie. And speaking of the weekend, you already know that this is going to be a long weekend. Oh, absolutely, a long weekend, because we will be celebrating Memorial Holiday Weekend. And we'll be talking about uh, our military guys. We'll be celebrating them. And uh, a lot of people do other things other than celebrate the people of military. But I think that's the first thing to do, first of all. If you see any, any military person in your area, just you know, wish them the best and thank them so much for their services because they deserve it. The ladies and the gentlemen of the military, they stick themselves out on the line every day to protect us and all of the people of this country. So we're going to be doing that, celebrating that. And those of you who uh, don't have to work Monday, don't worry about it. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the weekend. Some may have to work, but then, you know, that's life. Some people work on holidays and some people don't. But those of you who work on the holidays, just consider it the fact that it's a job that someone else would like to have. And you have it, right? So ladies and gentlemen, as we always do, get started. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the coffee hour. So I always say, what would the coffee hour be without a little coffee? So excuse me while I shoot up. It's always a pleasure to have you aboard with us as every Friday. And you may be watching us from different places now, being that you're in different time zones. Some people are just waking up. Some people are getting ready to go off to work. Some people are having lunch. Some people are getting ready to pack up to leave work. And some people are home relaxing after, after work. And some people are getting ready to go to bed. And some people are night owls. They, they're just doing their studying or whatever they do for the overnight period. We're all over the place in all time zones, and we thank you so much for being along. And those of you who are working at this particular moment, right, they have what they used to have, what they call the coffee hour. We have the coffee hour, but they have 15-minute coffee break in the corporate world. I don't know if they still have those. 
I have yet to find out because I haven't done corporate work in like a billion years, you know, before my days of radio. But uh, they used to have what they call the coffee, 15 minute coffee break. And you're in the office and you could hear the little bell ringing outside of the office doors. And you go into the corridor and the guy's out there with his coffee wagon serving coffee and uh, donuts and uh, buttered rolls and rolls with cream cheese, the whole nine yards right there. They don't do that anymore. You know, that, that was fun back in those days when they used to do that. And that was, those are the days of the automat too, where you can go into the automat and, and just stick money into the slot and grab what kind of meal you want. Uh, I miss those days. I really miss those days. However, anyway, the, the point is, is that uh, if you're on your coffee break, take that 15 minute coffee break and sit at your desk, right? 15 minutes enjoy your coffee and the coffee break for 15 minutes without doing anything and then when the 15 minutes is over and you have to go back to work put your shoulder to the wheel uh we invite you to uh keep your computer alive while you're working and watching the show at the same time they call that multitasking so there you go you got the best of both worlds and those of you who are uh, ready to go to bed, please stay up for a little while longer. Now, if you can't spend the whole hour with us, spend whatever time you can. We really would appreciate that. All the time that you can spend with us is, 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 is really appreciated, you know. And again, you know, if you're watching us on Facebook, tag this show right now to your friends. The show is young and we'll be here for a whole hour. And if you're on uh, YouTube, uh, you might want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's available too. And then when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, what happens is that every time we broadcast live or if we as much as post a video on YouTube, notification will pop up while you're online and you'll see that and you can go straight to uh, my YouTube uh, channel. It's all right there. So please subscribe to it. I urge you. I really thank you for doing that. Well, we got that all out of the way and we're going to be talking about the weather. Uh, as I said, it's going to be a long weekend a long, long weekend. And Memorial Day, yes, that's what it is, Memorial Day. There's gotta be parades. I know they used to have the Memorial Day parades in New York, I'm pretty sure they still have them. I don't know, they used to have them in Brooklyn. I don't know if they're going to be marching up Fifth Avenue. I don't even see parades that much, except for the, the basic parades that they have, you know, every so often, you know, uh, come along on Fifth Avenue. But I know in Brooklyn, they used to have the Memorial Day parade. We'll find that out. Maybe they have all kinds of activities going on where you are. And if they're having a parade, of course, our uh, servicemen and women will be marching in those parades too. So we want to thank them all uh, for uh, being uh, part of us and also uh, uh, taking the time to serve us, serve this country as you do. And it's very important. Now, also, while we're out talking about the military guys, you got to realize also this is Fleet Week. Fleet Week started on the 25th, a couple of days ago, just about two days ago, Fleet Week started. The military guys, the sailors, they all came in and they docked. And they dock here, here in New York, I can only speak for New York, I'm pretty sure they do it elsewhere around the country, you know, Fleet Week comes around. And they dock here in New York, way on the west side of town at the ocean, and the big ships come in, they dock and they come out. And they're going to spend all of this time, a whole week with us. As a matter of fact, as I said, they came in two days ago and they will be here to uh, the 31st, right through the 31st of this month. And that's all Fleet Week. week. So if you see these guys around, give them a salute, something, the right hand salute, and uh, just tell them how proud you are of them and uh, thank them for their service. And you're going to see them all over town. No matter where you go, you'll see them all over town because they, they, they're kind of like tourists. They come in and they have their little fun. So it's a little break for them uh, to get off the ship and just come in and just enjoy the town in uniform, of course. You know, some may be not in uniform, but for the most part, uh, they're in uniform. I would hope that they wear a uniform so uh, people would know that they're military people and they will be acknowledged by uh, the locals that come into town. So there you go and you'll see them all over. You see them in the bars and the restaurants, and they're going to have a little fun. And uh, it's always great to talk to these guys, the military guys I see every day living in New York, because we have uh, the guys from uh, the Marine Corps and the Marines. They uh, are assigned to uh, guard 
on the posts that they may have on the uh, Grand Central Station terminal and maybe uh, the Penn Station, you know, they have all of the military guys uh, guarding and taking care of business over there. So we always want to uh, salute our military guys. So if any of you guys are military guys, past and present, I don't care, past and present, I'd like to thank you for your service and uh, happy uh, Fleet Week and happy Memorial Day holiday weekend to each and every one of you. I'm gonna to get to the weather uh, forecast right now. Now, those of you, as I said, oh, if you're coming in and you want to um, uh, be part of us, you wanna indulge in conversation, you wanna say hi, I wanna say hi back to all of you. Cause I see some people who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, they're sitting idle. Some people don't wanna talk and that's okay. But they're just sitting idle just to watch the show on uh on facebook so but we thank you anyway but those of you who would like indulging conversation it's all free free exchange free ideas you don't need a membership card no union card or anything like that all you have to do is show up and the same for uh, my friends over there who are watching us on instagram as well now again uh give us your weather forecast if you, if you if you would you know if you're out of new york i'll take care of the new york weather forecast uh, myself but if you're out of New York, these different parts of the world, different parts of the country, kind of like lay that on me, you know, so I can convey it to the uh, rest of the audience. And I think that would be a great idea uh, to do that. So we'll get started right away with the weather forecast. And as we look, I see that uh, the temperature is 69 degrees right now. It's 69 degrees at this hour, and it's only after 10 o'clock here in New York right now, it's 69 degrees. So. Here's our weather forecast right throughout the weekend. Now in New York, it seems like it's gonna be a little dismal over the weekend, just uh, a little dismal. We get a few uh, spritz of rain here and there, but it's not going to be a washout of any kind. But so this is how it goes right now. Today is Friday, so it's gonna be foggy this morning and followed by scattered showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. Uh, storms may, may uh, contain strong gusty winds and we'll have a high of 76 degrees. Winds will be south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And the chance of rain will only be 40% for tonight's showers and a few thunderstorms likely. We'll have a low 66 degrees. Winds will be south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain will be 70%. And for Saturday, uh, it doesn't look any better. You're going to have scattered showers and thunderstorms, high 78. The winds will be west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain will be 60%. So uh, that sounds like indoor kind of weather. Saturday night will turn clear and we'll have a low near 60 degrees. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. But the good news now, as we elevate, the weather elevates and look good. For Sunday, sunny skies, high near 80 degrees. Winds will be light and variable for Sunday night. Uh, We'll have uh, mostly clear skies, low 62 degrees, winds will be light and variable. And for Memorial Day, whatever you wanna do, outdoor activities are in order. All you have to do is just reach out and grab it. It's gonna be sunny along with a few clouds. We'll have a high around 85 degrees. Winds will be uh, southwest at five to 10 miles per hour. So, you know, uh, in the beginning of the weekend here in New York, we get rain and then, uh, you know, it kind of tapers off a little bit. And by the time the end of the weekend comes around, of course, as you as I already told you, sunny skies for Sunday and uh, mostly sunny skies uh, for, for Monday. So everything looks good so far uh, in the weather department for the actual day of observant of Memorial Day. So uh, there you go. Again, it's 69 degrees outside. And that's only New York weather. For the rest of you guys, I hope that you would give me your weather as you come in. I just want to say hi uh, to all of you guys once again. And uh, thank you for your time and patronage uh, for joining us here on the Coffee Hour. And um, so everything is everything. So thank you for being along with us. Uh, we've got a little, uh, I guess, a little sad news on the entertainment front. I mentioned it on the uh, Talk Back Live uh, just yesterday. Uh, and uh, of course, it's, it's not news anymore because it came out yesterday. I just found out about it uh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon at lunch. Uh, actor Ray Liotta uh, passed away. He's 67. He was 67 years old. 
Leolo, of course, you already know him. If you don't, uh, I'll tell you about him. He was known for his role as mobster Henry Hill on the 1970 film Goodfellas. Remember that? And uh, he died in his sleep in the Dominican Republic uh, yesterday. And that's where he was filming his project, a thriller called Dangerous Waters. And uh, he is survived by his daughter, actress Carson uh, Leota, and his fiance, uh, God bless her, Jackie Natolo, and uh, his ex -wife, wife, Michelle Grace. And uh, what an actor he was. He was such a great actor. Uh, and, and, I, and I really enjoyed his work. I really enjoyed his work. And I was kind of stunned by the news yesterday because I was at lunch. And uh, on my cell phone, the news came up because I like to I, I like to stay on top of the news the best way I can. You know, I don't always stick to the TV all the time. Sometimes the news gets so depressing and you don't want to you want to take a break from the TV. But every now and then a breaking news story will come up and it will pop up on my uh, on my phone. And uh, and so that's how I got the news right in the middle of lunch. And um, it was kind of uh, sad to hear about it. But uh, again, you know, he gave us a great legacy of his work. And um, so um, we want to send our condolences out to his family, his friends, and all the people who work with him, all of the people who loved him, and uh, especially to his fiance. He was going to get married for the second time, you know, and so that uh, is not going to materialize. Okay, so anyway, our condolences out to uh, Ray Lagoda and his family. Here's some more news now. You probably heard about this as well. Ellen DeGeneres uh, did her last show yesterday, and she bid everyone a tearful goodbye. Um, don't know why the show, I don't know if it was her choice of, of uh, bowing out or if the show was canceled. Sometimes a lot of things are involved, ratings, but I couldn't imagine that uh, it was because of ratings. So I'm not sure. They never released that information on why uh, they're closing down the show. I mean, uh, as far as I could see, the show was successful. She was very well liked by uh, her viewers. Um, and she said that the, this show forever changed her life. And uh, she also mentioned she played a lot of clips in her show. Uh, from the time she started and her very first guest on the show was Jennifer Anderson. You know, she's the one to play on Friends. And Jennifer Anderson also, I understand, was on the show uh, yesterday, the close out as a daytime show. And you also know that she had her own sitcom in the beginning. Now, she also mentioned the fact on the show that when she first got on the show, she couldn't mention the fact that she was gay or she couldn't mention the fact about her wife uh, Portia de Rossi, uh, they're married now. Portia de Rossi is also an actress. I don't know if she's acting now or she's still in the business, but she was an actress. You might have remembered her on the sitcom Ally McBeal. And uh, she played that part. And anyway, she didn't mention all of that. Now, the thing that puzzled me about that is I couldn't understand why she wasn't able to do it or maybe they advised her not to do it. I don't. I couldn't understand that because you got to remember, Ellen DeGeneres came out of the closet long before this daytime show that she had. It was, as a matter of fact, it was during the time when she had her sit sitcom Ellen. That was in the '90s. Remember? You know, she came out at that. And when she came out, she was. Uh, I. I believe she was one of the first uh, uh, gay comedian uh, gay uh, comedians to come out. And then the rest of them follow, you know? So she was, she was like a pioneer in that. And I think she was one of the first ones that come out and then, you know, they all followed her, they followed suit. And as I said, she came out long before this daytime show. In any event, uh, she said that you're not gonna hear the last from her. And I believe that uh, she's got a lot to do, a lot to offer and maybe other things coming up, as I said, we don't know why uh, she bowed out the show. Maybe there's going to be a lot of things. And I'm just hoping the reason why she's doing it is because something better is coming along and she has to prepare for it. You know, uh, as you already know, just like most comedians, she started out as a stand up comedian in the clubs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how, you know, you could 
and she worked. A lot of people worked for what they got. You know, Seinfeld, the same way, you know, stand-up comedian, came, had his own show, and uh, it happens. So we'll see what she's got on the back burner. What's on the back burner, we'll see when it comes to light. And I can't wait to see what she has going. She's going to surprise everyone. Uh, she also did not talk about the controversy in, in the show now. We probably all heard about that in the show uh, when uh, she got started and she did the show and all of her uh, friends or her comedians, all of the comedians and the, um, the producers, uh, they had a lot to say about it, but uh, I'm not going to elaborate to that, but there were a lot of controversy in the program. Uh, but, um, you know, nevertheless, I do congratulate her and I do uh, look forward to seeing what she's going to do next. And um, I'm just looking forward to it. Okay, so we'll see what happens with, with that. Okay, so shall we? We're going to do that. We're going to Charlotte, North Carolina right now. And of course, Brian Camp is waiting there in the sunny side of the street of uh, the Queen City. And he's got the latest developments in today's world of sports. Brian, how are you today? I see you got, it looks like, uh, I see some clouds drifting in the back of you. You got oh, a sun and clouds or something? Or how's it going? That's just the after effect of, um, that's just the after, the after effect of the um, tornado scare that we had. Oh. But, um, yeah, so, but it's sunny. It's the, the, the sun is coming out now. It was raining yesterday and, and overnight it was it was like thundering and lightning and, but now it's it's the sun is coming out so um it's better now yeah so, so that tornado scare is off now it's finished right it's just about yeah it's just about gone it was on it, it just missed us it was on the other side of north carolina but um you know we got the we got the after effect of it of lots of rain and things like that but even through the rain even in the middle of the night from 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 12 noon of yesterday all the way to 2 a.m. I was smoking on the smoker, even even doing um talk back live. I was it was still going on. It was a long process. It was a 15 hour slow cook. And through the tornado or the or, or the after effect of the rain, it was still going strong. It just came out early this morning. So if you want to know, I'm glad you asked. It was a, a 12 pound brisket and four slabs of ribs. So um, I cooked that for the job. So I'm going to be going to the job right after this. But yes, it's clear, it's sunny, it's 72 degrees, it's going up to 81 today. And it's going to be a, a great weekend uh, of smoking, having fun. And, if, and you know, I, I didn't give you my um, picks. Uh, you'll give your picks, but I didn't give you no picks for this, um, um, for, um, for the television movies because they're all military movies this week weekend. So you know, well, it's <laughs> so only it's only right. It's only right because it's only right. It's only right. Only yes, and we gotta uh, pay homage to all of our military women and men, and uh, so we salute them. Right, exactly. Ab absolutely, yes. I don't have a problem with that. So, but uh, let me get them to sports. Um, uh, the NFL has um, um, given Colin Kaepernick the last play professional football on, on 2016, um, the year he started kneeling during the national anthem is pro uh, this is due to his protest, racial injustice is scheduled to work out this past Wednesday, which I think he did uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders owners Mark Davis is following the spirit of his late father, Al Davis, who's one of the founding fathers of the uh, old uh, um, AFL, American Football League, uh, they did the merge back in the mid '60s, uh, who provided many opportunities, such as hiring the first NFL black coach, Art Shell, first woman chief executive, Amy Trask, in the modern day era. He also, Mark Davis, also owned, um, also was the uh, first owner to draft a black quarterback in the first round, and the second owner to hire a Hispanic head coach in Tom Flores. Yes, so congratulations. Doesn't mean that he's going to get a spot. He's just trying out. But even with that, that's that's just one step forward and everything. I know a lot of people is totally against it. I know many people say he's critical about the American flag. It's not, again, listen, it has nothing to do with the flag. Absolutely nothing. But to his 
he has the freedom of to to stand for whatever whatever he believes is is in there is in the amendments. So he's um, just following what his personal beliefs. So let's see what will happen in the next couple couple of weeks. Major League Baseball, the Chicago White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson says that there was no inside joke between he and New York Yankees. That's right, Yankees third baseman Josh Dan uh, Donaldson regarding Donaldson calling Anderson Jackie over the weekend. Jackie referring to the late Jackie Robson who broke a major league baseball color barrier back in 1947. Um, Anderson speaking publicly on Tuesday for the first time since major league baseball uh, um, punished Donaldson in, in a one game suspension said the two haven't had a relationship and we thought there was nothing funny about what he had said since the first time he called him Jackie back in 2019. Now, Anderson claims that while Donaldson played for the Minnesota Twins, uh, the two had no contact, uh, but all of that changed after a hard slide to third base by the shortstop in a game against the Chicago White Sox um, between, the, a bit, between the two teams. They almost got into a brawl. It was a double header last week and they got into some heated ar arguments with both benches clear. Um, to his credit, to uh, Donaldson's credit, he did apologize. He, he was sincere about it, but according to a lot of baseball people, they said Donaldson is a guy that always makes these smart remarks and he's not really received well by his peers. He apologized, what can you say? You gotta let it go. Um, he did apologize to Rachel Robinson, uh, um, Jackie Robinson's wife uh, say it was no, it was nothing intent by what he had said. This day in sports, May 27th, George Hollis, 1968, retires from coaching, finishing with 318 regular wins and six NFL titles. That's a lot of victories and a lot of titles. This is before the Super Bowl. Lenny Randall tries to blow a slow roller foul ball, but the Empire says no. Now. If you want to know what that means is that when, when you watch baseball, when there's, there's a ball that's hit, there's a little, they call it a little squibbler, and it's about to hit the line, it could either go foul or fair, it's, it's just tugging the, the, the line. So what Lenny Randall was trying to do, he was trying to blow the ball while it was rolling to blow it foul. Uh, he tried it, the umpire says no. So that's what happened. Weird story, but yes, many of us had played baseball, tried to have done that whether it was a softball or regular baseball game. And in 1987, Phil Nico, New York Yankees knuckleball, is the third pitcher to make 700 starts um, behind, only going behind Cy Young and Don Suckett. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a short, short sports update on this Memorial Day weekend holiday. I am so proud of my Yankees. Those boys are something else. Uh, when we closed out the show last night on Talk Back Live, they, I think the score was 3-0. Uh, and at the end of it, at the end of the night, it turned out Yankees win. Final score, 7-2. <laughs> As John Sterling would say, ball game over. <laughs> Yankees win. <laughs> Yankees win. John Sterling, if many of you don't know John Sterling, he's a... Um, He's been a he's been an icon in the radio um, uh, industry for many many years. He used to call New York Nets uh, ABA basketball games back in the early seventies and um, hockey games in the seventies um, and eighties as well. Moved to Atlanta, called the Braves game, and he's back home in New York and legendary sp sports announcer John Sterling. Yes, I remember he used to have a show here in New York, uh, a radio show in New York on WMA. Uh, MCA, yes. Mm -hmm. He came on. I, if I believe, if I recall, he did the afternoon. I think he was right after Bob Grant, uh, or, he, or I, early evening. I think he did been, the early it evening. Been, it could have been after Leon Lewis, the late Leon, Leon Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. It was because I remember the roster was Bob Grant from nine to one, Leon Lewis from one to three, and then John Sterling. Yes, that's exactly that's that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was some lineup. Yeah, it was a, that was some lineup. Yeah, it was a great lineup of uh, of, uh, but you know, the people tuned in. He had a very popular show. That was a very popular show, and as now, a fact, 
his show, I think, was like the maybe not the only not the only sports show on radio, but I think that I think that show kind of kicked off. It was well before Fan too. Oh yeah, the Fan came out in 1987. I think yeah. it, I think it was yeah. But let me ask you this: What during those days did WMCA go against? WNBC, because I know that Howard Stern and Don Imus uh, were, were um, on that same um, station, and they, I don't know what the ratings was like if they were going against one another, WMCA and WNBC. No, no, they had nothing. They, there was no competition there, because okay. one was sports, the other one was just trash talking, you know, between Don Imus and, 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 uh, and, and let's see, Don Imus and, 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 and uh, uh, Howard Stern. And uh, Howard Stern, uh, he, he wasn't such a nice guy with, with Don Imus. He really no, he wasn't a nice guy with Don Imus. I, I heard there was a story. I don't know how true the story was. Uh, do you know that um, uh, Don, Don Imus was an alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic? And uh, it, the story was told that he bought uh, Don Imus a ba- a a, uh, a basket like like save like a fruit basket, but he bought a basket of booze and gave it to him. Yeah, and even when uh, Don Imus passed away, Howard Stern did not have any kind words to say, even along all those lines. You know, no, he wasn't very he wasn't very nice to him. I don't think they, you know, I mean, look, I have my I have my thoughts about Don Imus. I have my thoughts about Howard Stern, but you know, in reality, you know, let's be fair. You know, you don't do that to a man. You don't, you know, belittle a man like that. He he had a sickness, and then you make mockery of it. Now again, yeah. I'll say that I don't know how true that that was. What that was the story I got. I don't know how mm-hmm. it may not even be true. So I was. Right. I'll just say just to stay out of trouble. Allegedly, he did that. Allegedly, yes. Yeah. But but we all know that they did not like one another. That we could say. Yeah, because they because they said it publicly to one another. Yeah, and that was the days of Soupy Sales was on there. He had his own radio show. It was, it was, but radio was pretty good back in those days. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Shot the hell now. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Anyway, um, listen. Thanks a lot. Uh, we let's see. What do you got planned for the uh, for the Memorial Day holiday weekend? Um. Probably cooking again, uh, so not not on a major scale, but um, yeah. just gonna relax, kick back, and watch some um, some Netflix and some um, um, Prime Video. So that's what I'm probably doing. Watch some, watch the playoff games, sports. Yeah, it's a good idea, and and the weather's gonna be nice here. I don't know about over there, but it's gonna be nice here on Memorial Day. So it's gonna be warm. Okay. So I'm yes. looking forward to that. Okay, yeah. Brian, thanks a lot. We'll catch you back here uh, next week. Everybody enjoy it. Be safe, especially during this year holiday. And make sure you say your prayers for the lost victims, of which I know you will talk about. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. That was uh, Brian Camp, ladies and gentlemen, with the latest developments in today's world of sports, sports update. He's here every Friday around this time and they bring us the latest, as you already heard. And uh, of course, that his his part of the 2020 feature, he just wrapped that up. He's always here 20 past the hour, now 20 to the hour, DJ Pete, with his uh, entertainment information. Uh, he's not going to be here, so I'm going to cover that for him. He was gracious enough to, as he always do, when he's not coming in, uh, to send us the information so we could convey it to you. And so that's coming up in just a few minutes from now. And if you just join us, then the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. And of course, uh, we're with you uh, until the top of the hour. And of course, we bring you a lot of information and uh, a lot of good coffee. So excuse me while I shoot up. I had read in my uh, weather report early uh, that we get dense fog. We got dense fog in the morning, but it, I, and they didn't say anything about sunshine. It says something about rain. So I'm just thinking we're being teased right now. Mother nature is kind of teasing us right now because I could see sparks of sun outside. So, and they didn't say that. You heard me read the weather forecast. They didn't say anything about sun. They said lots of rain. Now that may still happen. I'm pretty sure it'll still happen. 
But I think this is just like a reprieve, a little taste of what we're not going to get for the rest of the day. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And um, moving down the line, we talked about, uh, Brian mentioned about the, uh, the situation in Texas. And we, of course, talked about that last night on the show, which is one of the things that, you know, bothered me. It got to the point when the news came out, I believe that was Monday, and the news came out in the afternoon our time around maybe about four o'clock in the afternoon that when it first break four o'clock in the afternoon our time here in New York when it broke and um, it just left a feeling empty feeling when you hear about 19 children 19 children were killed by this gunman 19 children and two teachers and they were all in the same classroom and the gunman uh, Salvador Ramos, Salvador Ramos. And it was a school in Texas. The name of the school is called um, uh, Rob Elementary School out in uh, Uvalde, Texas, and which is a small town, by the way. And uh, it's, 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 a real, it's a real situation where now people are wondering, you know, what's going to happen next? What can happen next? Because it's almost like people are looking forward to what's going to happen next is because it happens over and over and over again. You know how many mass shootings we had over the year? We had a lot of mass shootings over the year. And um, it, it's... it's I'm just, I'm not, I'm usually not speechless about everything. But I do know, I do know that a lot of people are up in arms about it. And they're saying, you know, when is this going to stop? This has to stop. We can't do this anymore. Stop it. You know, now it can be stopped. A lot of people say, you know, this is this is on and on. It's been happening for years. It's been happening for a long time. It's going on and on and on. And no one seems to care. No one's going to stop. I don't think it could stop. It can stop. And you know where it stops. You know where the buck stops? People are saying it on the TV. Uh, some people are just not listening to it. And I've said it a hundred times. The buck stops with you. You stop it. You know? Uh, because if the people in Washington are refusing to take or acknowledge this or, or draw attention to it, if they're, if they're refusing to do that, then what we have to do is we have to make moves. We have to make changes because the people in Washington, the only reason why the people in Washington are in Washington is because of you. Because you are, it's what they call the power of the people, you, me, people who vote, you know, you put people into office to do a particular job. And if they're not going to do that job, then what you have to do is just tell them, okay, you know, we put you in here because we thought you can do the job. We thought you can make us all feel better as people. You, we thought you could make us safe or help make us safe, and you're not doing the job. So we're going to pull you out. We're, we're going to pick you out of that crowd, and we're going to put someone else in there that can do the job. That's where you come in. And of course, they did primary voting already, you know, uh, especially in, uh, in, in uh, Texas. They did in Texas and they did in, uh, uh, well, in Georgia, I'm sorry, in Georgia, you know. And uh, I, I, are they still counting those votes out there? I know they have to count, we count a real, you know, a couple of votes. I don't know, I haven't heard any story. I, I would imagine they're still counting those votes because they came so close together. And uh, so, you know, we have to see what happens with that. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, it, you know, the buck stops with you, you know, and 2020 come around, this is 2020, 2022, when that comes around in November, watch who you vote for. Examine your product. When something is presented to you, examine that product pretty well. When you give a squirrel a nut, that squirrel doesn't pop that nut in his mouth just like that. You know what that squirrel does? He examines it. You ever see a squirrel do that before he starts chopping on it? 
he does this. And that's what you have to do. And they give you a nut. And believe me, <laughs> they gave us a lot of nuts. Examine that nut. Look at it. See if it's healthy enough to eat. See if it's going to do the body, the inner body, any good. See if it's going to do you any good. If it doesn't do you any good, with the, with the, if the squirrel doesn't like it, he throws it away. When you see a dog, right? You put a plate of food in front of the dog, the dog is going to sniff it before he eats. If he doesn't like the smell of that, he's not going to eat it. No matter how hungry he is, he's not going to eat it. Or she's not going to eat it. You know? Uh, it's just like a, a, a canine. You know, they could de detect things. And if they detect something that's not right, they smell it out. And, and they're going to let you know about it. So it's the same thing with you. You got to sniff it out. You got to find out, you know, if this is right for us, if this is right for the country. You know, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I please, you know, we, we really got to do something about this situation. I was watching wrestling the other night. And um, one of my favorite wrestler, wrestling uh, our commentators, uh, Jim Ross, we, we called him, we called him uh, the uh, good old JR. He, he looks like he's from Texas. He always wears a cowboy hat. I don't know if he's from Texas or not, but he looks like a Texan. And he said something, he said he took his break in the show and said something about, you know, something's gotta stop. Something's got to stop. He acknowledged the situation between wrestling matches. He took that time in his show to say something's got to stop. And, and then he looked at the camera and he says, and you can do it. And he's absolutely right. I want to elaborate more on that uh, as we go along. But right now, it's time uh, to give that information. DJ Pete's entertainment section or oh, the segment is coming up, it's here right now. He's not here today, so we're going to fill in for him. And we're gonna start off right now. Sun Ray, Sun Ray, or Sun Ra, I should say. That's S-U-N, Sun Ra, R-A. Sun Ra uh, was born on this day, May 22nd. He was born on May 22nd, not on this day, but May 22nd, 1914. Now, let me give you a little history about him. I played his records when I was a jazz disc jockey. And his real name was Herman Poole Blount. Herman Poole Blunt, and he's known as Sun Ra. And um, he was an American jazz composer, band leader, piano, and a synthesizer player. And this music that he played, you know, it was kind of like weird, kind of like weird kind of, uh, 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 of, of his music. And, and I thought, you know, you used to hearing jazz, you know, when you hear jazz, you hear that. He didn't play that kind of jazz. It was kind of something that he did. It was kind of on a par when uh, Miles David did that album, Bitches Brew. If you know that album, you know the kind of music he played on there. And it wasn't like the real Miles Davis that you knew. And it was sort of like that. Anyway, uh, he celebrated a birthday this, uh, on the 22nd, uh, he was born in the and he passed away, by the way, um, May 30th, 1993, at the age of 79. And he was born in, uh, he died in, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, where he was born as well. So uh, Sun Ra, if you ever, you know, go on YouTube later on and, and uh, kind of find his music there and see, you know, what I mean, see how you like it, Sun Ra. Okay. Also, uh, Artie Shaw. Oh, more, more music. This is a music town. Artie Shore. Now, those of you, uh, uh, the kids don't remember Artie Shore, but these guys that I'm talking about right now, these were guys who actually, uh, uh, they were innovators of this music. So Artie Shore, he was a big band player. So Artie Shore was, uh, Artie Shore, uh, was an American uh, clarinet. He played clarinet, uh, composing a band leader as well. Also, he was an actor. He played in some of those old musicals back then in the 1930s and 40s. And uh, he played with the big guys like Sinatra and Tony Bennett and all of those guys, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, that kind of a, that kind of a, and so it was all jazz. Anyway, he would have been celebrating his birthday on the 23rd of May and he was born 1910 and he passed away December 30th, 2004 
at the age of 94. And um, he was in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. That's the name of, that's where he passed away, Thousand Oaks, California. Artie Shaw. And Artie Shaw, by the way, a lot of you may not remember this, but Artie Shaw was also uh, married to um, Ava Gardner, <laughs> right? He was married to Ava Gardner. And so was Mickey Rooney too. And so was Frank Sinatra. Uh, I didn't get it, never got a chance, never got a chance. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on down the line, uh, we've got uh, Rosemary Clooney. Okay, it's all this is music here. Everything is music here right now. Rosemary Clooney would have been celebrating a birthday on May 23rd. She was born in 1928. Uh, Rosemary Clooney, I remember uh, one of her big hits back in the old days with, was called This House, This Old House. And uh, Rosemary Clooney was an American singer and she came to a perform in the early days in the 1950s with songs like Come, Come On To My House. That was another one of her big hits. And uh, Baccia Me, Baccia Me Bambino, Baccia Me, an old Italian song, Baccia Me Bambino. And uh, Tenderly and other songs like uh, Half As Much and Hey There, You With The Stars In Your Eye, you know, and this old house, as I mentioned, all of those great hits she had back in those days. She, she was an actress, she played in movies, she played with Bing Crosby, she played in, uh, what was the name of that uh, Bing Crosby movie? It was called Holiday Inn. And she played in, it was a Christmas, kind of movie. Anyway, uh, she would have been celebrating her birthday, May 23rd, and she was born 1928. She passed away uh, June 29th in 2002 at the age of 74 in Beverly Hills, California. And a little note, I may say she was also the aunt of George Clooney, the actor George Clooney. So Rosemary Clooney, what a great voice she had. She had a, a great talent, great talent. And moving down the line, uh, now here, now we get a little bit younger now here. We come to my age bracket right now here. Uh, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan would have been celebrating his birthday on the 24th. He was born in 1941. Bob Dylan, he was also a singer, songwriter. And uh, he uh, was famous for that song, How Many Roads Does It Take? The answer is Blowing in the Wind. That's what it was. The answer is blowing in the wind. Bob Dylan was born Robert Allen Zimmerman. That was his real name, Robert Allen Zimmerman. And he was born on this day, 1941, on the 24th of May, 1941. And uh, let's see, he's, he's still around. He's still around, he's 81. So he turned 81, so happy birthday to Bob Dylan. Keep those music lyrics coming in is uh, no one does it better. Okay, moving right along, we have Tom T. Hall. Tom T. Hall was born May 25th, 1936. Now, uh, if you don't know who he is, let me explain Tom T. Hall. Uh, and uh, he was nicknamed the storyteller. And he was an American country music singer and songwriter too. And uh, we go way back there, you know, so maybe that's it's for a lot of people, you don't know who he is, but Tom T. Hall, he was born, again, May 25th, 1936. He passed away August 20th, and 2021, at the age of 85, and uh, he was born, he passed away there in Franklin, Tennessee. That's uh, Tom T. Hall. Tom T. Hall. Okay, we move right along. Hank Williams, Jr., Hank Williams, now there's a Hank Williams and there's a Hank Williams Jr. Now we know we no longer have Hank Williams with us, but Hank Williams Jr. is still with us. He was born uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, on this day on May 26, 1949. And of course, uh, he follows in the father's footstep and plays that rockabilly stuff. And uh, so there he is. And uh, he was, uh, let's see, where was he born? He was born, um, Shreveport, Louisiana. He was born in Shreveport, Louisiana, Hank Williams Jr. And so he keeps his father's music alive as well as, as doing his own thing. All of this is music. All of this is music. Everything is music today. Now we go back in time, way back in time before a lot of you, even before me, but we just all still know him. You don't even have to be in that era to know who he is. Al Jolson, you know, he was 
back then in those days, he performed in those minstrel shows in the blackface and singing his songs. Uh, he was born May 26th, he would have been, his birthday would have been uh, yesterday. Uh, born in 1886, Al Jolson. Um, uh, of course, they're not playing much of his songs. You know, he was his famous for the big hit, uh, for that big movie, uh, The Jazz Story. You know, it was like a half talky movie. There was some talk in it, uh, and, but the most of it was like non-talking. And they talk, but you could only see the, uh, the captions. And you have to read the caption, but when he starts singing a song, it was all right there. He he sang in there one of one of the uh, of the, the bigger hits by him. Toot 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 tootsie toot toot tootsie goodbye. Toot toot tootsie don't cry. <laughs> anyway, Al Jolson. He was again uh, born on the 26th, 1886. He passed away October 23rd. In 1950, so I wasn't quite there yet. I wasn't quite around yet. That was like he died uh, just days, just days before I was born. Okay, and uh, he was 64 years old. So I never really got a chance to actually know Van Al Jolson in the sense of him being on Earth the same time I was here. But you get to know Al Jolson. So even people who weren't even born back then, even young people today know who Al Jolson is. If they didn't know him then, they know him now. You know, he was just like that. It's just like the legacy of some people leave legacies is that if people who weren't around when they were around, they'll get to know them anyway. So there you go. And moving right along, we got Peggy Lee now. Peggy Lee was also in, you know, into the jazz. She, was, she would have been born uh, on this day, not on the 26th as well. She was born in 1920, and she was uh, one of the top female singers, along with uh, people like, uh, she sang with people like uh, Ella Fitzgerald and, and all kinds of people. And she was an American jazz and popular singer. She sung from the, the, song, the popular song books, such as, such as Sinatra and Martin and all those guys, and Ella Fitzgerald, they sing those kinds of songs. And uh, she was also a composer and an actress as well. Uh, you might remember, and then you may not remember, she, she was in a movie with Jack Webb. And Ella Fitzgerald was in the same movie too. Uh, I can't think of the movie just offhand, but she also uh, sang with Benny Goodman. Oh, and um, she did a lot of variety shows as well. And uh, she was famous for that song, Fever. You remember that? Uh, you give me fever. She was famous for that song. And she passed away January 21st, 2002, at the age of 81 years old. And, uh, she was a lovely woman, lovely woman. I, I, I never got to, to meet her, didn't know her, but uh, she was very, I don't know if I could say this anymore, but I'm going to say it anyway, just for the sake of being ridiculed. She was a very sexy woman. And I like complimenting women. I really like complimenting women. And I say sexy in a nice, respectful way. Very, she carried herself a lady, 100%. Now we come down to all of the young people of today. You know this lady, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks celebrated her birthday just yesterday. And um, Stevie Nicks, um, she uh, was born in 1948. She, she's Stephanie Nicks, but we know her Stevie Nicks, and those of you who know Stevie Nicks, she was from the group Fleetwood Mac, and she's still active today in her own right. She does her own solo work, and she does it well. Stevie Nicks, happy birthday, Stevie Nicks. Uh, Sonny Burgess. Sonny Burgess was born, well, his birthday would, would, would be tomorrow. He's born in 1931, and Sonny Burgess, uh, he's no longer with us, but Sonny Burgess, uh, was a graduate from uh, Newport High School, 1948. In the early 1950s, Burgess played uh, boogie woogie music. And we all know that great boogie woogie music. He's no longer with us. And he passed away August 18th, 2017, at the age of 88. And they just keep on coming. John uh, Fogarty, John Fogarty was born 1945, his birthday would be tomorrow. And um, 
Of course, John Fogarty, you, you all remember him. These are the younger years, and he was an American singer and songwriter together. And um, uh, along with other great uh, musicians, he, um, he was the founder of uh, Credence, Clear, 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 Credence Clearwater Revival, right? There he is, the founder of Credence Clearwater Revival. And that's Joe um, John Fogarty. John Fogarty, happy birthday to you, my friend. He's 76, 76, or he will be 77 tomorrow. Go. Okay, we move right along. Uh, and quickly, T-Bone Walker. T-Bone Walker was, will have a birthday tomorrow as well. T-Bone Walker was a blues singer, blues guitarist, songwriter, band leader. Uh, he was born, um, in 1910, he passed away uh, March 16, 1975, at the age of uh, 65. He died in Los Angeles, California. And last but not least, here she go. We all know her, Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight will be celebrating her birthday tomorrow. And she be, she was born in 1944, Gladys Knight, and uh, she's had her thing called Gladys Knight in the Pit. You remember her? And she's still around. She will be 78 years old. Come tomorrow, she was born in um, Alaska, Georgia. She's one of the top female soul singers, Gladys Knight, and of course, the Pips right there. Okay, thank you, DJ Pete, for all of your information. Uh, DJ Pete, you can catch him uh, on the radio. You can catch him um, on www.radioairwaves.co. Dot UK. I forgot the hyphen. That's www.radio-airwaves.co.uk.com. And of course, he's on Mondays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Also, you can catch him on his hometown station, WMPG or WMPG.com, www.wmpg.com. You can catch him every other Tuesday between 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. and all times Eastern in the United States and Canada. And Further birthdays I have for you. I'm going to run down right quick. Birthdays we have uh, uh, Left Eye Lisa Lopes. She was from TLC. She's no longer with us. She would have been 51 today. Actor Todd Bridges of Different Strokes is 57 today. Actress Kathy Silvers of Happy Day. She's played Jenny Piccolo. She's 61 today. Singer Dee Dee Bridgewater is 72. Actor Louis Gossett Jr. is 86. Jazz pianist Ramsey Lewis is 87. Actress Lee Merriweather is 87. Jazz uh, saxophonist Bud Shank would have been 96 today. He's no longer with us, of course. U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger is 99 years old today. Actor and uh, the late Christopher Lee would have been 100. The late Vincent Price would have been 101, uh, 111. And also would have been 111 Vice President of the United States, Hubert Humphrey. And so those are all of the birthdays. Now let's move along right now uh, to all of the movies of the week. I only have one, and I think you're going to like this. From Here to Eternity. Here to Eternity. And that's 1953 with Burt Lancaster and um, Montgomery Cliff and uh, Deborah Carr. And of course, Frank Sinatra's in it too. You can catch that on Turner Classic Movies this Saturday, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's right there on Turner Classic Movies. I hope that you get a chance to check it out. That's my only pick of the week. And if you have the time, go to Turner Classic Movies and scroll through the, um, uh, the line and look down through the, uh, the guide and you can see other movies that you might enjoy. But that's my only pick uh, from here to eternity, the Burke Lancaster and Montgomery Cliff and Devil Carr and Frank Sinatra. And that's again, that's Saturday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. And it's right there on Turner Classic Movies. And that's what we have for you. That's what we have. Okay, uh, let's see, I got a note here. No, but that has nothing to do with, okay. No, it's time for me to uh, wrap things up, ladies and gentlemen, I had a good time. Uh, I would like to talk more about the situation uh, in Texas, but we run out of time, but we'll be back here next week. We'll find out as the uh, 
situation escalates and I'm pretty sure there'll be more news that we can talk about it next week. We'll be back here on uh, next Thursday for Talk Back Live. Brian Camp will be with me. And of course, you'll have the latest developments in today's world of sports, sports update. And you'll be there with me, of course. That's uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Other than that, I'll be back here next week along with Brian Camp with sports, uh, the 2020 feature and DJP2 with his news of uh, entertainment and reciting all of those birthdays of the people of notoriety. We'll be back then. I hope you had a wonderful time and I hope you have a wonderful long weekend. Have a great day and a nice memorial holiday weekend. Happy Fleet Week to all of you military guys. We love you. God bless you and thank you for your service. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been watching The Coffee Hour with Frank Allen. The producer has been Al Dale. Technical assistance, Dave Taylor. Research by Sandy Pierce. And I'm your announcer, Donna Stenke. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Coffee Hour.